Today we're talking about the four different track types that exist in Cakewalk by BandLab. So in this video, we're gonna discuss their purposes, we're gonna discuss all their use cases, and of course, I'm gonna show you how to actually make the tracks. So if all this stuff sounds good to you and you wanna learn how these tracks work in your music creation process, stick around after this introduction. Welcome everybody, I'm Dan Spencer and I am the Audio Sorcerer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to perfect your audio recording, mixing and mastering skills. So before we get to the video, make sure you guys smash the like button. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. So in today's video, we are talking about the four different track types that exist in Cakewalk by BandLab. So before we get into that, I wanna mention that I have a link popping up in the top right corner now to my Cakewalk training playlist. So this playlist contains tons of videos on Cakewalk training. So if you guys want to get better at using this amazing DAW, definitely check out that playlist after this video. And now that that's out of the way, I wanna make sure you guys know to stick around until the end of the video to get some bonus tips and tricks on what we're discussing in this video. And with that being said, we're gonna start with our first track type, which is the audio track. All right, so here we are on Cakewalk by BandLab. And as you can see, I have a couple tracks already created. The first one is actually our audio track, but I don't wanna talk about it yet here. I wanna show you how to create an audio track from scratch first, and then we'll talk about what it is and what it has to offer. So there's a couple different ways to create a track. We can simply right click here in the open space on the track pane, and we get options to insert tracks here or we could simply hit the little plus button right here. And this gives us access to the different tracks here. And like all DAWs, there's also keyboard shortcuts. So we'll just simply add it this way. So I have audio selected right here. Now the input is going to be the actual device that you're using to record with. So in most cases, you should have a audio interface of some sort that is gonna be a device that's connected to your computer. Um, you really don't want to use your computer sound card to record. So you want to have some sort of external device. Even if it's a USB microphone, that is acceptable. Um, this is actually the Yeti here you see, microphone Yeti. That's a USB microphone that I'm using right now. So uh, in a scenario where you have maybe a two-channel interface, you would select the channel that you have your microphone plugged into. So if you have it in channel one, you would select channel one here. So for today's purposes, I will select the Yeti because that's what I have. You have an option to record and able. So that means that it is ready to record right off the bat. The record button will be enabled. Uh, you can enable input monitoring. That means that you will be able to hear that microphone in your headphones right off the bat. And then there's some advanced controls in here. Um, you don't really need to worry about these for this beginner video. So just, you know, we'll leave these for another time. Uh, and then for the tracks, this is the actual count. How many tracks do you want to make? We really just want to make one. So we'll hit create here. And then we have our track here. Now, they usually come in uh, collapsed here. So we can just stretch it out here like that. And this is our audio track. So once you actually get some audio recorded on it, this is what the audio looks like here. This is an audio waveform. So. If you're unfamiliar with an audio track is, it records audio. <laughs> so audio is essentially, in the recording world, it's gonna be your um, microphone, what it captures. Um, it's gonna be potentially a guitar, a keyboard, anything you can physically plug into your audio interface with an audio cable, which would be quarter inch or XLR. It's not gonna be something that's done uh, with a MIDI cable or over USB, okay? So it's not MIDI, it's audio, okay? So that's probably the most popular track, um, I would say. Now, it's not the most popular in the sense of maybe in today for people who are making a lot of beat-based music because most of that music is created using you know, software-based synths that exist inside of your DAW. And we will actually talk about that track type next, which is called the instrument track. All 
All right, so to insert an instrument track in Cakewalk, there's actually an extra way to do it, which I think is the easiest way. So if we go over to our browser over here, if we click this tab here, if you hover over it, it says insert virtual instruments, click that. It will show you all the different virtual instruments that you have available in Cakewalk. So basically we just have to pick one. I'm gonna go to sampler and then I'm gonna pick the originals Miss Mills piano. I'm gonna drag this over to the track pane and I'm gonna let go. Then all of these settings here, just leave them as is and then hit okay. And then it's just gonna insert it for me there. So I'm going to expand this window here. Now, if I want to see the actual virtual instrument, all I have to do is simply click on this icon right here where my mouse is hovering over, just double click on it and it launches it right here. This is how you can see it, okay? So that's how you get access to it. Now, when you record on a virtual instrument track, you are recording MIDI data. As you can see, this is an example right here that I recorded here. If you want to see your MIDI data in large form, you can simply just double click on it here and it launches your piano roll window. And then you can do all kinds of editing in here. So I'm not gonna go into detail on this particular window and how to edit this because this is a beginner video, but I do have a link popping up the top right corner to my video on how to quantize MIDI. So if you guys are feeling adventurous, check out that video after this one, okay? So that is the instrument track and its purpose is pretty much just for recording MIDI data to trigger software synths. So there is no audio data recorded. So with that being said, let's move on to our next track type, which is the MIDI track. All right, so the MIDI track. So the only way to really insert a MIDI track is to right click here and then go to insert MIDI track. Now you can also go to the insert section at the top here and then you have access to inserting it here along with some of the other tracks we talked about. Now the MIDI track, I'm just gonna be blunt with you and this may maybe make some of the um, advanced people mad. It might not, they may agree with me actually. You have no use for MIDI track, don't even bother, okay? Um, I never, ever, ever use MIDI tracks. So a MIDI track is going to record the same data here as you see on the instrument track, except that um, you're not gonna be able to insert any instrument, you know, software instruments onto it, all right? Um, the only purpose that I use a MIDI track for is actually in a different Dawn Pro Tools. And I use it for using MIDI data to trigger something in another plugin, okay? Um, I believe it was uh, one of Isotope's plugins, but I can't remember which one because it's been so long. So I'm just gonna cut this portion of the video short and just tell you, just overlook that track and don't even, don't even think about it, okay? You don't need it, all right? So with that being said, let's move on to our last and final track, which is the aux track. All right, so the aux track is actually one of my favorite tracks and it is fairly new to Cakewalk. It's been around for six or so years and that may seem like a long time, but Cakewalk has actually been around since I think the early 90s. So yes, it's been around a long time. So the best way to go about creating an aux track is to go to a track you wanna route somewhere. So we'll say, we'll use the audio track up here as an example. So right now, it's being routed to the master output, okay? So this is your output here. And we're gonna click here, and then we simply go down to new aux track, click that, and it made the aux track here, right below it, so we'll expand that. And you'll see that it's called aux one. So all this did was it is routing the audio track to aux one. So an aux track basically just acts as a bus, essentially. You can route um, as many audio tracks as you want to this one aux track. Um, you know, you can basically create groups and send it here. Now, yes, we have buses inside a cakewalk, but sometimes aux tracks are easier to work with because as you know in cakewalk, if I open up the console here, you may not know this, 
The buses are over here, okay? They're on the right side of this line and they cannot be moved over to the left. Ox tracks are over here on the left side and they are a lot easier to work with. We could do a lot more with them essentially, okay? But all you really need to know about what an aux track is, is it's just something that you can route audio from other tracks to. That's all it is, okay? So as promised, uh, let me get into the bonus portion of this video and let me give you some additional tips and tricks about these tracks. All right, so for our bonus section here, I thought it'd be good to go over the controls that exist on these particular tracks. And we're gonna talk about the audio and instrument tracks because they are the main ones and the controls are mostly the same. So we'll use the audio track as our example. So as you can see in the top section here where it says audio track, if we double click on this here, we have access to renaming it. So that's where you rename it. Here, you can mute the track. Here, you can solo the track. This will record enable it. You can see I'm talking now into the Yeti microphone and you can see I have level. This button here will allow us to hear the microphone. Down here, this gives us several options to view the clips, the audio transients, and these are the actual transients that exist on the actual waveform here. We can see automation if we want to write it in. We could do pan volume. We can automate the mute. We can automate any parameter in any plugin. We have clip automation in here for gain and pan. Okay, so all kinds of stuff that you can do for automation. Put this back on the clip setting. Here, this is for read automation, whether you want it enabled or not. And this is for write automation, whether you want it enabled or not. And this is the freeze button here. And what this does is it basically allows you to free up resources by freezing a track. And what it does is it takes away the resources from your computer CPU that the track uses, okay? So when you have a very large session, you might wanna start freezing some of your tracks because the session might crap out your computer and you'll get an audio dropout signal at the bottom right of your cakewalk session, okay? Next to that, we have the archive option. Now archive is actually kind of like mute. So if you enable this, it will mute the track, but it will also allow you to not use any of the resources that the track is using. So if you just use the mute button here, uh, it will still use the track's resources. So you may ask yourself, well, how much resources does the track use? Well, it's actually dependent upon how many plugins and what plugins you're using on it. And this is the plugin section here. So if we hit the plus button here, this allows us to insert audio effects. And then we have all of our different plugins in here. So you have things like compression, EQ, distortion, saturation, reverb, delay, whatever you want to add, whatever you actually have in your collection. You know, some plugins use more CPU than others. So just keep that in mind. And lastly, we have our input and output section right here. So the input is what we selected when we first made this track. If you remember earlier, it was the Yeti microphone. So if you selected the wrong input initially, you can go in here and change it to whatever you need it to be. And then on the output here, this is going to the master. So this is the master output of your audio interface then to your speakers essentially. But if we wanted to route this to that aux track we made, we can just simply route it to the aux track there. So this is the master output of your track, okay? So those are the main tips and tricks that I wanted to show you regarding the tracks that we talked about today. All right, so now you guys know all about the four different track types that exist in Cakewalk by BandLab. So if you guys end up liking this video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe because I'm making this content for you and hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. And if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you check out my video on how to actually record music inside of Cakewalk by BandLab. So with that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys later and peace out.